So as I'm sure many of you guys have seen, Rimac broke the matrix and set 23 new records for a production car. Now for those of you that don't know what the Rimac Nibiru is, well it's a 1813 horsepower fully electric hypercar. Let's delve into the extraordinary achievements of the Rimac Nevera, exploring the technology behind its success and the mind-blowing records it has set, as well as why it should be kind of impossible for a streetcar to be that fast. The records were established on the 2.49 mile straights of the automotive testing Papenburg track in Germany. To validate these achievements, Rimac enlisted third-party verifiers, 12soft and RaceLogic, ensuring the utmost transparency and authenticity. Their presence during the record setting runs adds credibility to the Navira's astonishing performance. The Navira's acceleration capabilities are simply mind bending. Utilizing its four motors and all wheel drive system, the Navira catapults itself from 0 to 60 in a jaw dropping 1.74 seconds, leaving traditional sports cars in its wake. Even the 911 Turbo S, a car known for its amazing launch, completes the sprint in almost a half a second slower. The quarter mile is dispatched in an astounding 8.25 seconds as verified by Dwellsoft. Remember, this is a road legal car on an unprepped surface with road tires. Beyond the breathtaking sprint to 60, the Rimac Navira showcases its incredible acceleration at various speed intervals, reaching 100 miles per hour in a mere 3.21 seconds. The Navira continues its relentless assault hitting 120 miles per hour in just 4.19 seconds. Pushing the boundaries further, the Navira storms to 200 miles per hour in just 10.86 seconds and achieves an astonishing 250 miles per hour in a mere 21.86 seconds. These figures are unheard of for a streetcar. And Rimac didn't just build a car that can get to speed fast, this thing can deaccelerate just as quickly. It sprints from 0 to 62 and back to a standstill in a jaw dropping 3.99 seconds. Just imagine the g-forces in the car when these records were attempted. Additionally, it achieves remarkable acceleration and braking runs, going from 0 to 124 miles per hour and back to 0 in 8.85 seconds, 0 to 186 miles per hour and back to 0 in 15.68 seconds, and 0 to 249 miles per hour and back to 0 in an astonishing 29.93 seconds. So, the Rimac Nevera has shattered records and rewritten the rules of automotive performance. But how? As I said in the beginning, and even in the title, this shouldn't be possible. While it's challenging to definitively prove that a car cannot reach 60 in under 2 seconds on the road, there are several scientific factors that make it highly improbable and exceedingly difficult to achieve. Firstly, traction limitations. Accelerating a car from a standstill to high speed requires substantial traction between the tires and the road surface. The immense torque and power necessary to achieve such acceleration would easily overwhelm the available grip on road tires and an unprepped surface, causing excessive wheel spin and loss of traction. There's actually a video on YouTube where a very smart guy does the math with the grip and the power and everything, and according to the math, it shouldn't be possible. Next, weight transfer and stability. During rapid acceleration, weight transfer occurs, shifting the vehicle's weight towards the rear wheels and reducing the load on the front wheels, taking traction away from the front wheels, and again, causing the car to spin. Designing a car with sufficient aerodynamic stability and traction control systems to counteract these effects become increasingly complex as acceleration increases. Then, power to weight ratio. For a car to accelerate quickly, it has to be relatively lightweight. But also, it needs a whole lot of power, making the car too light and the launch will suffer. Making the car too heavy, the car will launch hard, but the actual acceleration after the launch will be slower. So, it's a very difficult balancing act. Remember, on a prepped surface with drag tires, it's a whole different story because of the crazy levels of grip that can be achieved with the right track and right tire setup. So, how did they do this? Well, firstly, this would not be possible in an internal combustion engine powered car. I hate to say it since I love internal combustion cars, but the power band and traction control systems in EVs are just otherworldly. You see, because the Navira is electric, all of its 2360 Nm is instant from 0 RPM. When you put your foot down, the power is there. Then to stop it from spinning, EVs like the Navira have four motors, one at each wheel, and the computer monitors power and slip at each wheel hundreds of times a second and adjust the power to each wheel independently to achieve maximum power and acceleration. 
Now, internal combustion engine powered cars, you can also have four wheel drive and torque vectoring, but torque vectoring through differentials just aren't as precise or as fast. The power bands are also not as good for acceleration, and the traction control system can't adjust power as fast and precisely as those found in EVs. That said, on a prep surface, the internal combustion engine still holds the crown, and I'm gonna hold on to that, and hopefully it doesn't get taken. Yeah, but let me know down below what you think of these insane achievements from the Remac Nevera. Like, I'm not a big fan of electric, but you can't deny the straight line performance that electric brings. In the corners, I will still take a lightweight sports car powered by a combustion engine over an EV, but on a straight line on a road, you just can't compete. It's really difficult. But let me know down below what you thought of the video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll probably like all of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.